this is part two to the six steps to breaking a generational curse. So let's go to step four. Okay, here we are. As a result of the natural parent-child relationship that immediately develops when a child is born into the family, a strong spiritual bond will form out between the child and his parents. Even if one or both of the parents end up abusing that child over a period of many years, this is why it is such a shook, a shock to a child's senses when they first start to receive any kind of extreme abuse from the sinning abusive parent. Their first natural reaction is that there must be something wrong with them or that they must have done something wrong themselves to warrant receiving this kind of abusive behavior. It isn't until the child starts to get older, wiser, and smarter that they start to see the abusive and sinning parent for what they really are. Someone who is acting out on very sick and evil impulses with no efforts to try and control it. When a sinning abusive parent gets this far out of control and is doing horrible things to their children, then what the child must do when they get old enough to understand all of this is to break any ungodly and unhealthy soul ties that may have formed out earlier on in the family with this sinning parent. This sinning parent will always be your natural parent by blood. But that does not mean you have to stay spiritually attached to this evil sinning and dysfunctional parent. A soul tie is any type of spiritual bonding that can occur between two people who have entered into any kind of personal relationship. A soul tie can occur between two spouses, two friends, two siblings, and between a parent and a child. A soul tie can be good and healthy. One, like that occurs between two people who marry for true love and who are capable of loving their children and their friends in a good and godly manner. However, a soul tie can also be a bad one where the personal relationship becomes dysfunctional with one of the persons becoming the dominant and abusive one in the relationship and the other person becoming the submissive one who is being abused and hurt by the dominant person. What happens in the spiritual realm is that when one person is being severely abused and dominated by the other, an ungodly and unhealthy soul tie can develop. And if that kind of unhealthy soul tie develops during the abusive relationship, then it has to be completely broken, broken in order to be completely set free from both the abuser and any demons who may be attacking you as a result of the legal rights <clears throat> given by the abuser to the demons. 
Demons will move in to feed off any kind of unhealthy soul tie that can develop. So you have to make sure that any of these kinds of destructive soul ties get completely broken. When you go into this kind of battle prayer, give me one second, please. Sad as this is to say, the special parent, the special parent child bond that should be forming out in the early years of that child's development in the family can be completely ruined and completely severed. If that parent starts to enter into any kind of abusive behavior towards that child or any of the other members in that family, in the family. What this means is that if the sinning parent has gone too far with the abuse of a child over a certain number of years, then the child has to break any unhealthy and ungodly soul ties that have been formed, that may have formed out in those early years when they get old enough to be able to understand all of this and then is able to do this on his own. The Bible tells us to choose our friends carefully. In this life, just because your sinning and abusive parent is your natural father or mother by blood, does not mean you have to stay spiritually attached to them. If they refuse to pull out of their evil and wicked ways towards you or any of your loved ones in the family. And the battle prayer I will list below, I had the young girl break the soul tie between her and her natural father due to the murderous spirits that were still operating on her father. If you are willing to fully break any ungodly and unhealthy soul ties that may have developed and formed out over the years between you and your sinning parent, then you will now be ready for step five which will be to fully break the curse line that the demons have been feeding and operating on, which has been giving them the full legal right to be able to keep attacking and tormenting you over all of these years. Number five, break the curse line of the demons, of the demons. Once you have properly completed the above four steps, then you will be ready to fully break the generational curse line that the demons have been feeding and operating on. As you will see in how I word this of the battle prayer below, you will first ask God to do this for you since you have completed the above four steps for him, then you will take his authority and his power and verbally command the curse line be fully broken in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Matthew 16 and 19 that whatever we bind or loosed, loose on this earth will bound or loosed up in heaven. In other words, God has already given us his power, anointing, and authority to trample over all the power of our enemies. And some of our enemies are definitely demonic spirits. When you get 
into this part of the battle prayer, you will be taking this spiritual authority direct from God the Father, and you will be commending every inch and every part of this curse line to be completely broken, completely severed, and completely demolished in the name of Jesus. Once this curse line has been completely broken and completely severed between you and your sinning parent, then you will be ready for the last and final step to be able to receive your deliverance. And that is to verbally command all of the demons to now leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, verbally command the demons to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. Once this cursed line has been fully broken, the demons will have nothing left to be able to hold on to, and you will now be able to verbally engage with them and command them to now leave you in the name of our Lord, of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, I will show you how to word out this kind of battle command in the battle prayer below. Remember, the Bible tells us that the Word of God is our sword. You directly engage with demons by verbally engaging with them. If you try and verbally command the demons to leave you without completing the above five steps, their legal rights will not have been properly broken and they will not leave. You must first make sure that you have properly completed all five of the uh, hmm completed all five of the above steps before you actually step into the arena with these demons to command them to now leave you in the name of Jesus. Okay, this looks like the end, I believe. Okay, so this is part two to the six steps to breaking a generational curse. God bless.